In this video, you're going to learn about the state of service design in the Ukraine and what service designers can do in time of conflict. Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. Hello, it's Max. And you watching service design show number 150. Hi, my name is Mark Fontaine and welcome back to the Service Design Show. On this show, we explore what's beneath the surface of service design. What are those hidden things that make a difference between success and failure? All to help you design great services that have a positive impact on people, business and our planet. And the guest in this episode is Max Tkachuk who is a service design professional based in Kiev. The reason I'm so excited to have Max on the show today is that he's a very active participant in the local community and thus in a great position to give us an insight into the state of service design in Ukraine. So in this episode, you'll hear how the design field has evolved over the last years, where it is today and which role it can play in the future. And of course, we also have to talk about which role service designers can play in time of conflict. And Max has some very interesting examples of that. If you stick around till the end of this episode, you'll hopefully be inspired by some of the good things that might come out of this sad situation and how design could contribute to a brighter future. If you are enjoying conversations like this and want to keep growing as a service design professional, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon because we bring a new video like this every week or so. So that about wraps it up for the intro and now it's time to sit back, relax and enjoy the conversation with Max. Welcome to the show, Max. Hello, Mark. Hey, this is going to be a special episode. I always say that, but uh, this one is really special because you're in uh, Kiev and we're definitely going to talk about the state of service design in uh, Ukraine right now. Obviously, there's a lot to discuss, uh, but before we uh, do that, I want to do the sort of the service design show tradition, and that is to hear a short introduction about who you are and what you do these days. So please enlighten us. So, long story short, 15 years in software design and development, uh, uh, 15 years uh, close collaboration with software developers, mostly in IT and like digital part of the thing, coming closer to product design and then entering the service design sphere, trying to blend digital and non-digital services and like value propositions. And last five years trying to educate new bridge of designers and all this being lucky because of meeting so many good people, both from Ukraine and from around the world, working for them and being very young to get to know Nielsen Oman group and get close to iterative design process and trying to develop it further since then. Mm. So uh, pushing, pushing the maturity of service design in uh, Ukraine and uh, yeah, managed to uh, stick it out for 15 years in the software development scene. I uh, I managed only one year and then turned it into a hobby and then moved into service design, which is uh, still my home. Um, so, uh, Max, I also have five questions for you in the rapid fire question round. Uh, your task is to answer them as quickly as possible. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, sure. All right. Um, what did you want to become when you were a kid? Football player. Okay, which club? Oh, I was born in Zaporizhia. And there was a club inside my native city from like National Ukrainian League, let's say. But uh, from youth, I was uh, the great lover of Milan and then, of course, Barcelona. So Barcelona still stays in my heart deep. Okay. And I watch to this day the games. All right, all right, fair enough. Uh, what's always in your fridge? Non alcoholic beer non-alcoholic beer yeah you have to <laughs> you have to say that today um which uh if you could recommend one book to uh somebody who's listening right now which book would you recommend if you start it would be design of everyday things and if you develop yourself better go to jesse james garrett elements of user experience mm, nice uh what was your first job visual designer and that was your first job yes okay awesome uh, i was making booklets hmm. Hmm. 
interesting. Uh, and final question. Um, do you remember when you got in touch with service design for the first time? It was uh, like around 2000, maybe 10, 11, when design thinking as a concept from idea got like ground and people started talking about that. Uh, then it became a quite interesting disting distinction between experience specialists where somebody started to use the term user experience widely and somebody some other guys started to say that user experience is kind of subset of customer experience and this distinction first made me understand that like user experience it, it's not the end of this thing and the idea of actually doing the like non-digital part of it and especially merging it with digital part of it and making like this shared usage like uber split share ride and so on make so many new opportunities for the services nowadays when you merge both digital and non-digital in kind of product uh, service proposition hmm. and do you uh, was there any um i don't know a conference a presentation a book that got you on this track or was it just uh, a matter of many things it, coming it, together? It's yeah, yeah. It's on many layers. So mm -hmm. from one side, I really enjoyed Don Norman branch of things, and then I was really inspired in my young years by the talk on TED by Philip Stark with this red jacket when he explained why we need to design in a way we do it. And in service design, particularly, it was probably uh, my first touch was with service design network. Mm -hmm. And I found it really interesting that it had almost 30 branches worldwide and there was no mention in Ukraine. So first thing we do, we kind of co-founded it and started slowly but surely making events and push it a bit forward just to make people know what source design even exists. Mm. You know? And like a couple of like three or four years passed since then, and like small portion of service designers around Ukrainian companies are getting presence. It's a yeah. small portion, but they already exist, and we are kind of uh, glad. Yeah, I can imagine the service design drinks and the service design network. I have fond memories of that. I remember that uh, here in the Netherlands, that was one of the drivers behind the growth of uh, the service design community here as well um thanks uh for that so um max this is a special episode like i said at the start uh, we definitely want to uh, contribute and help to the situation in ukraine um so we we decided to do uh, a donation a fundraising whatever you want to call it can you uh, share a bit more about that so there are uh several official links that we will put inside show notes that you will be able to click and uh, participate in donation to ukrainian army and volunteer organizations they are all official and they're kind of okay to be trusted uh, yeah. Yeah. there are different variations how you can help today there are really good volunteering movement that will be like researched in future and maybe even now we can start to think how this can be made not local volunteering but this like needed international things going moving forward like people there goods here and how it can be done if this this situation repeats how can we be prepared even more than we showed today yeah and that's one of the topics we'll also talk about. So just to reiterate, if you're listening to this or watching this episode and you want to contribute and sort of do uh, do an act of kindness towards the situation in Ukraine, help the people out over there, check out the show notes. Uh, you'll find links uh, to do donations or fundraising to different organizations. Uh, pick the one uh, who you, that you feel most uh fond about they are all sort of uh validated uh, by you max and you know that these are okay and uh that's the way you can sort of contribute uh, through this episode so uh, definitely uh go ahead and do that um now let's dive into the topic of today because um this uh isn't something that i'm an expert of and i definitely want to learn about this more we said that it might be interesting to explore summarize the state of service design in ukraine now and we're going to do like a typical journey uh in service design because we're going to explore the situation like before 
or in the past, the situation today and what it might be in the future, right? Did I summarize that correctly? Well, like maybe we will not shoot all the stars, but let's try. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how far we get. So um, let's uh, rewind the tape and talk a little bit about the history of design slash service design in the Ukraine. And maybe we need to even zoom out a little bit more the history of Ukraine. I don't know how far we have to go, but what do we have to know about the history of design in Ukraine? Oh, okay. Probably we should not touch all cultural part because it's so rich. We need like a couple of other episodes to go there and like art part and all of that. But concerning service design and like application it can find inside the Ukraine, inside Ukraine you can say that first um, from good sides, yeah, Ukraine as developing country has a, had opportunity to leap in several like circles of development. Yeah. So what we have here, we have here. Uh, 4G network, like kind of wide coverage and sustained, we still during the war have access to 4G internet here widely. Yeah? Uh, internet access generally is fast and cheap for all Ukrainians, and it will be like surprising for Europeans seeing Ukrainian internet in the price for it. Yeah, so mostly for ten dollars a month, you can go with 100 megabits per second and more, like with no doubt almost anywhere where we have more this micro mobility thing they're talking about so these bolt scooters in ukraine are a normal thing for a couple of years now and the more surrealistic thing you can imagine now in kiev riding an electric scooter knowing that siren can go on so but like food delivery yeah covid pushed us to this but food delivery is absolutely normal thing for many many people and it like Manifold in, uh, went up when COVID started, and for now it's normal thing for many people. Goods delivery, these shipments, they are widespread in Ukraine. They're really like spread out, and you can deliver anything to any point in Ukraine in day or two. So this kind of logistic infrastructure thing, like technological one, is set up in in many ways. It does. I don't say that it's hundred percent good or hundred percent no gaps, but it's really good, like standing. From bad perspective, going to deep culture, I think the, we need to say that plan economy sit deeply. Its roots sit deeply in Ukrainian mentality. So these state provided goods you consume without having ability to give a proper feedback knowing that this feedback will be used properly so yeah i'm i'm living in the netherlands so you need to help me out a little bit can you give an example what do you mean so imagine you have a lot of people and limited amount of resources and you are kind of this tsar manager yeah and you want to be like okay for everybody yeah? so you say i have this amount of milk or i can do this amount of milk and i need to spread this milk around these people so they will be starving so i will be decreasing the quality of milk increasing the capacity of milk yeah or standardizations yeah these human standards let's say civic standards call them whatever you want but they are imagine i always talk with my designers like this again imagine netherlands and you have a like ladder from zero to 100. People from Netherlands think they need to live like 95. And the government says, you know what, you're good guys, 96 maybe, 94, sorry. But like this, Ukrainians don't even understand that they have this ladder and they can need to claim their needs to be done by their government. So they ask not for 95, they ask like for 17, and get nine you know it's like that but in 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 um in which areas do you feel that the most uh corruption for okay. sure yeah uh legacy mentality of soviet person that uh, goes even when you become this capitalistic producer so you don't think you need to use a feedback you kind of this artist you produce the stuff and you all now consume it because i'm kind of author of that yeah and it kind of old school thinking is like waterfall thinking. Yeah, you have only it's like in old school before digital with chairs. So if you make a design of a chair and you make a mistake, uh, 
but it's already produced in like hundred thousand pieces. All you can do is wait for version two. Digital age change everything because errors can be eliminated so fast people don't even notice. So, th so that um, mentality or culture of uh, getting, like you said, getting feedback, updating, uh, seeking out feedback, that's not really part of... It's starting. It, it's they starting. are starting to understand uh -huh. because the hard way. They spend money, this time to market, they bring the things to the people and don't get adoption and reusability. And that's it. If you take any feature of any product, you can measure it at least by two things. Mm -hmm. Is it used? How often it's used? Mm -hmm. This is yeah? like, and then you attach business model to that. What else do we need? To, is there anything else we need to know? Let's look. So no feedback loop. We already said quality sacrificed to, to quantity any given time. Yeah. So if you have choice, you go with quantity, and it's about anything. How you treat products and customers inside that products as well. So remember these portals, internet portals, when every news was like monetized by advertisements. So number of clicks to this page means money. So like everything is built, like we'll bring you users, go away. Just look at this. We don't need you anymore. This like, you know, consumeristic in bad meaning of the thing, uh, mentality. What do we have more? Exception of the things are army in, and sports. It's USSR legacy. So the quality was not sacrificed for quantity in some matches in army and sports. And it's both like military industrial complex because you need warriors and you need military like weapons. Yeah. Okay. Talking about design and people who call themselves designers in Ukraine, we have a couple of problems. So historically designers Ukrainian designers, let's say, have evolved themselves into some ladder of specialty. So they start with marketing and visual design, and then say they are kind of interface designers, then UX designers, then product designers, and then service designers. So they constructed themselves kind of ladder. And you have in-betweens like UX, UI, UI, UX, you see those here and there in resumes and so on. So, and they try to climb this ladder. That's why service design is like top floor, like luxury one. <laughs> uh, that's that's maybe uh, sometimes the uh, the negative thing about uh, service design that it can feel quite elitist. Uh, that uh, not everybody is good enough to be a service designer because it's the holy grail of design. But let's not dive into that. Um, I'm curious if you can say a thing or two about um, how was uh, design education structured in Ukraine. I don't know. I've been graduated like many years ago, like 2006 from higher education, from University of Software Development. And I can say it was kind of pity state of things because you were taught not what things you will, what market will need in five years when you come there, yeah? but what the structure of teachers they do have. So they teach you from what they have, not what you will need, yeah, because of less of like money support from the state and so on. So corruption as well was in that. I don't know how it goes now, but mostly if I tell you my uh, look from here, uh, private education took over the government education in absolutely any part of the thing like starting from like say 18 years and further when you a young person starts to think about like what's going next probably they will come up with private education or international one so you have kind of in baltic countries you have this institute of interaction design really good for the it's buck yeah it's like top of the world in design sphere concerning like amount of dollars you spend or euros it's really cheap comparing to another educational institutions in europe and the us so they select not ukraine in ukraine you have a couple of good schools of design really good to see the guys called projector they've been design school mostly starting their roots from visual and creative disciplines and then taking the side things like you experience design and development and like art even and humanitarian things so they are trying to become this 
T-shaped anything, starting ground for anyone in this country. So kudos to them and release, like, have joy looking at their development last 10 years. So what's more? If you know Lambda School, this idea that you learn and then pay, this is like European, US company. So you be taught something and after you've been brought to work and you start having salary, then you start paying like 20% of that thing of your salary to the company. And they're like cumulatively, yeah, and it's like business model for a startup is a good thing. So Mayat Academy is like copycat in some way of Ukrainian kind. And the guy who was working for Google came back and started the thing. So kudos to Mayat Academy. They are doing a really good job educating developers, especially. All these guys really responded good to the war. So they opened up their uh, like educational activities for uh, also free participation. And like for guys from army, they can enter free to start like learning design and development. Mm. So um, like yeah, uh, there's. It sounds like there's a lot going on, and um, it's good that there's some movement and uh, a slow adoption of design. Um, <coughs> I I'm curious, like um, from the outside, it seems that um, one of the things that Ukraine is doing really good is. Um, um, educating or quote unquote producing a lot of software developers. Um, like, how do you see that in relationship to the number of designers that must like anywhere in the world that 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 ratio isn't uh, equal? But uh, how is it in Ukraine? It's just it's like it's so sweet point you touched because it's I can talk about hours about this. So mostly, imagine that organizational maturity to be interesting for mature designer who raised from interface to ux to product is not enough in ukraine so many designers when they become product designers leave or even ux designers leave ukraine because there is no local local products of that kind of interest yeah the, with that mature processes that deep integration of design inside itself and so on and so on they are but not so much and like from perspective, uh, like uh, wh why this happens and how developers uh, uh, like are touched with this, we have huge development lobby. Let's call it engineering lobby, software engineering lobby, because from one side it's like legacy of USSR making weaponry, so physics, mathematics, mathematics. This is like really on top. From other side, when they learned first books of software development, they read software design patterns. Yeah, so the word design always appeared on their book. Problem that technical system and social technical system are kind of different things. Yeah, and we are on the part of social technical. And if you want to stay in technical systems, you can go with what they call API, yeah? when the user is another system. Then you can stay with that principles and design paradigm. But actually, customer becomes even more than this, because if you trust your engine of learning from customer, you will find yourself in a solutions that maybe not require half of your like capacity because they will become absolutely different. Mm. Um, I, I, I totally can see, and that must be a challenge. Like when the people who do get to, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a high level of design maturity, maybe it is that they actually leave the country, right? That's, that's basically what you're saying because there isn't enough demand in the local market. Yeah, yeah, and if you wonder, like, if this small country, Ukraine, has far-reaching diaspora in software development and design, you'll be surprised. Yeah, so all big four, like, big four companies, our guys are there on both design and development position. Like, Facebook, yes, Google, yes, McLaren, yes, like, you name it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Smaller companies. If you think, do Ukrainians have products well known beyond Ukraine? Yes, as well. So you have Clean My Mac, the application that cleans a lot of Mac, Mac books, if you know. You have Grammarly, this plugin to correct your grammar, done by Ukrainian team as well. So there are like 10 of them, mm -hmm. and they're really shining. Not saying that, like, on the way to become, or some of them even toned unicorns, but 
I think we need like tenfold of that. It's yeah. good, but it's so uh, less than we could make. Mm. And the root of that is like the developer to design ratio in Ukraine is kind of 10 to 1. So mm. in different numbers, they say even that they have hundreds of creative specialties, but actually designers who work with developers, let's say, it's like maybe 25k maybe 15k people but developers is like 250k 200k 300k and like year or year growth in development is like up to 20 percent i think mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's mm -hmm. like big numbers and designers cannot like catch up and when you have huge lobby it means your software development team is stuffed accordingly to the law where a designer comes the last one yeah, yeah, yeah. last yeah. one so yeah. like for the rest of the budget and can be dropped the first one maybe. sure yeah yeah well uh, i don't think ukraine is the only country that has a problem but uh it it, it has that challenge so um I think um, this paints a, a little bit of a picture of the situation that design was in or is in. Um, let's migrate into more or less the situation today. And I don't know, maybe you want to talk about uh, the situation uh, before uh, February 21st, uh, 24th and after. So I'm, I'm mostly curious to like, how is the design community responding to the whole situation that's going on right now so like for short before how we entered the force so we have really vibrant community of people that are intersecting in many various ways and uh, i don't know if it's surprising for you but for me it was and our research locally with team of Bank showed as well the same results the force is so much decentralized that you can't catch up with all the things being done nobody can so there is no centralized force that's doing this just the moment you thought you've collected everything or saw everything you've been pushed like from 10 different fronts with new knowledge new information some meme going viral going viral you know like tenfold tenfold and meme on meme on meme and like this meme community became really good for us. We're touching designers and how they participated. Let's see. Uh, did they did response in really rapid, fast and decentralized way. So everyone stood their own ground and asked probably, as I see themselves, what can I commit from what I have? So mostly it's getting the form of protest art. Designers do cooperate start and cooperate with developers and that's the point i'm gonna like dig in mostly uh to make this you know dashboard of russian losses like you enter the side and see this amount of tanks plus seven today mm -hmm. so this dashboard is like uh, like digital yeah and from other side we have developers who ask themselves the same what we can do and like the first force appeared is close collaboration like two to three uh, like organizations between themselves developers minister of digital transformation and something co collaborated and we have application on I, uh, ios and android that alerts you with all the sirens that are going now in ukraine where uh, in any point of ukraine and we have dashboard with sirens and even all strikes on ukraine in real time so they like flush like this and you can see how intense it really is not just listening to the news but like we have this protest art from one side in huge representation and these developers who are starting doing these things already in big numbers but by themselves and we are kind of trying to shrink this together to make this collaboration happen and uh, if we try to divide the horizons of activities we think about like before liberation day and after liberation day so there are some activities that will be not needed we hope after liberation day like this sirens application let's say, yeah? so you have this sap priorities you want to follow yeah 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 what, what else what else in what do we have two months into the war mm -hmm. so our worst attempts to not to feel shit and to do something yeah what resulted in mostly what we had to do is like canceling russia designers canceling russia design communities from international standpoint because for me i found a couple of people who are like 
know, like, I don't know who they are after all of that, hiding by the mask of designers like Bright Light Force doing good. That's why we're like trying to eliminate them from international community. We like shame them because some of them were really high profile uh, PR people who like silent themselves from day one, not saying anything. And we're trying to raise their like, I don't know, self-conscious. Hmm. I, I'm curious, like it's it's impossible for me to even imagine what it must be like in your situation. But um, have you seen um, um, any any uh, shifts in mindset or things that sort of su surprise you? So uh, like, did you expect that the design community to stand up uh, like it did? So I don't want to be super praising of a design community because the design community knows that I'm like uh, a, a bit of a guy who shouts at them all the time, but uh, they did really great job. And I cannot say nothing bad about the amount, the quality and anything. The only thing lacking is like the whole, the, the huge, this power needs to be directed to the another power called developers and they need to merge and collide into the new solutions. Mm. Staying aside is, is an option, but like if you compare those options, but probably you choose the, the first one. Uh, so uh, designers can do more trying to be bring more value. The problem of today life and what we researched throughout our Raphaizen team is like, the journeys of people in Ukraine for nowadays are so different. They're like shattered glass with so many like, you know, pieces and the pieces are like the same, it's the same glass, but one from bottle, the second from vase, you know, so it's like, it's all, all of them are similar and different uh, both ways all the time. So you mm. can't really make a solution and ask even yourself, what is the most important thing you can do? Because the, once you created it, you doubt it. Mm. Because new data comes in, is it really necessary even? And you try to do new and you and you and you can come up with a solution that will like fix it all or fix yeah. at least something. Well, you're in a situation where things change by the hour. So like planning yeah. um, that uh, looks We're like, saying day, yeah. day a year now. It's yeah. like day, like seems like a year yeah. in terms of number of changes. But, but that would sort of, almost um uh argue for the uh for the role of design because we if anyone we should be pretty good at improvising and sort of feeling what what's needed in the situation like making quick prototypes not being too worried about if this will work in five years uh so like it seems that the design community might be in a really good spot to help today and maybe even more in uh What's going to come? Yeah, like imagine the thing. You you have this understanding of what's happening in Ukraine, even if you freeze all the state now. Okay? So it's like a lot of people outside of Ukraine feeling they want to participate in making Ukraine come back alive, let's say. Yeah? And we need to see these opportunities of remote participation of the whole world's design force together with local designers, because not to use the whole world design force who want to participate, to collaborate on doing the solution for local people. It's like a waste of these resources. And I don't want to waste it, especially when I see so many requests from them, from Ukrainian diaspora and from people around the world. So let's talk about that. Uh, let's fast forward to let's hope as soon as possible. And uh, you're sort of being able to focus your attention on rebuilding restarting um and building a better ukraine um how do you see the, potentially the international design community um uh, helping out here so for, for the f firstly i see it helping yeah because i became a bit more adult and i understand that i don't need to do everything myself yeah so it's like when i was young so how Imagine that Ukraine integration in European culture, both for people who left to EU because of the war and because Ukraine is no doubt European culture with all its like 
30 years, uh, last years of development and like direction where it was going. The culture is a tricky thing. And like for people who left, it's really good to know how to be the most of a help if they join service or product design teams in Europe. The same Ukraine can be a helpful resource to understand how designers were actually able to make iterative design, even in Ukraine, even with that type of engineering stakeholders, even without users, even without like uh, approval from uh, the management. Yeah, because most of design in Ukraine happens without approval of the management by their own resources, like trying to come up with the reasons for doing this. Let's say. Mm -hmm. like, hmm. So um, I hear two things. Let's let's uh, dig into the the first one, uh, which I uh, interpret as how to help uh, uh, designers from Ukraine integrate into product teams, service design teams outside of U Ukraine. Right? That's uh... yeah. Maybe build this agency and bridge back to Ukraine if we wish. Yeah. So what's needed for that? Or yeah, what's what do you think is needed? How how could we help to accelerate that? Can I have a, a question for the question? Please. Because I need to ask you here. <laughs> it's like, what you, if you live through the appearance of like typical in your mind, Ukrainian designer into typical uh, like product or service team, like say in Amsterdam or mm -hmm. somewhere, what will be the top five pain points they will face in the first month or two? Mm. How do you feel it? That's a, that's a good question. And I would love people to comment on that as well. But um, um so from a service design perspective, I think language in general is a challenge uh, because understanding people requires nice. talking to yeah. them. So uh, the other thing, um, maybe it has to do with um, speed of development. But then again, while I'm saying this, I'm also thinking that it really depends on uh, the organization. Because if you enter a Dutch bank or, I don't know, uh, a healthcare organization, I don't think there that the speed there will be any different than maybe in a Ukrainian uh, organization uh, who is also risk averse. So it depends on on the organization. And you asked me for a top five, which uh, which is a real uh, uh, challenge. But uh, let's lower to three. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think language, maybe speed of development, and I I don't think that actual skills or tools and methods will be any challenge they are pretty universal um and can you elaborate on speed on development you mean it will be slower than in ukraine uh what i suspect it no well it again it depends on the type of organization you enter so um um while i'm saying this i'm just making assumptions because i'm not uh, an active service designer anymore but um if if a, a service designer from the Ukraine has been exposed to agile software development somehow, like speed of development won't be any anything new to them. Uh, and okay. again, it depends in which type of organization you sort of end up over here. Like if you end up in a startup, uh, things will move fast. If you end up in a bank, yes, yes. things will probably move a bit slower. Yeah, so yeah. yeah so so reasonable I so uh, yeah well, I, I have one one third thing and i think uh and here's the the real interesting design challenge i think it's like trying to understand what somebody from the outside might be able to bring to the existing organization so this is again like flipping it on it on its head and asking uh, ourselves the question so if we bring a service designer in from the ukraine how can we best utilize them which ask them which questions do you have for me like they are they sort of have the beginner's mind like how can you best utilize that i think that would be super interesting and i'd like not only ask our uh, viewers to comment on that but maybe if they come back to this uh, episode in some time they can like comment on that once again and mm. say how it all went mm. well or not and sure. what, what we can learn from that as well yeah absolutely yeah so uh this was the thing about uh integrating designers from ukraine uh, into organizations outside of ukraine your other uh, thing that you mentioned is um 
how to use the international design community to uh, basically locally inside Ukraine, correct? Yeah, yeah. So, so mostly you can, like for this short thing, you can map out the basic problems uh, that Ukraine has that can be solved with design mm -hmm. in some way. And then you put the international community together with Ukrainian community and it can be not only from one source, from, from multiple educational sources from within Ukraine, collaborate on that because yeah. let's touch the top of that. You own the culture and solutions of much more developed world. Any solution that can be done in Ukraine probably been in the head of Western world. You have experience of doing that. You have bad experience of some things. You know where not to go from get go. Yeah? And all you need to do is collaborate, applying this to the context of Ukraine, mm -hmm. both in the war situation and legacy or, and like nuances of uh, developing country. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe with this, like you mentioned at the start, like uh, technology wise, there's quite um, been quite a leap with 4G coverage, uh, bolt scooters. Uh, we don't even have bolt scooters here in the Netherlands. I mean, uh, you have so much to screw, you know, as designer. It's like but, everything is yeah. done. Just well, go and, and build that, up on that. that. That's the thing I wanted to say. Like maybe there's also like a leap to be made or a, a stage that you could potentially skip um, when you bring in. Uh, external design expertise. Um, I don't know if that's the case, but potentially there's that opportunity. The, the question I would have here is, let's let's say that uh, designers in the world are ready to do this and are eager to do this. What do you feel is going to be the biggest struggle to actually make this happen? We'd like to have not only problems mapped out by ourselves, but had, have kind of guarantee or willingness to develop them. So eagerness of government, you name it, how, whatever you call, to develop actual solutions or develop based on research done on actual solutions, but take this and move forward is actually the pain point. I can explain you with one example. So Ukrainian Metropolitan, yeah, this subway. It's, first it's all, lives, not on capitalistic uh, like basis, but being donated by the uh, like city gov governance. But imagine that they have everything being from Soviet era. The only change in 30 years is some wagons made new look and maybe better quality. But all the bits and pieces of that structure were, were not changed. Uh, one example, when train goes off, you have a timer, and in all civilized world, this timer shows you how much time you have before the next time train arrives. Do you know what timer represents in Ukraine? Uh, maybe how much how... time? How much time was from the passing of yeah. the last one? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, how much time you uh, you missed it? <laughs> yeah. So these things, yeah. This is this is easy to spot, uh -huh. easy to redesign. But we don't, we're missing the third point of this real mm. implementation. So the government, in some way, will want to have some kind of like tasks as mm. APIs or mm -hmm. some descriptive things that will be solved by this international community of local and international design specialists all together with their promise to actually integrate or work on the results of it. Yeah. So basically, what and I, I, I can totally understand that because it's often not the lack of skills or again, methods of designers. It's often having a good client or having a good brief uh, that allows you to do the work. And um, I don't know if we uh, outside of Ukraine have solved this, but definitely there's a lot of knowledge on how to create the environment in which design can actually, well, where you can harvest the most benefits most fruits from it and that probably requires a lot of different people than actual designers to make that happen yes yes like prerequisites for that from ukraine are kind of tricky so you have big let's say advertising and creative industries design lobby so when designer goes up this ladder 
he stays like a senior position of creative design, visual design, and don't go up. So the road to become product and service design, you, you need to look past this all, yeah? And many designers just stop. And coming back to your idea of making a leap from here, maybe it can be done, probably thinking about like pushing the knowledge from service design more vertically down, not going up as they created, but starting with service design is the widest spectrum thing because people with higher education, not design education, can start and understand this top thing and then specialize if they want. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Um, so um, sort of trying to wrap up this um, conversation, we're not done yet, but uh, I'm sort of looking for uh, ways to help out. So imagine somebody is listening right now and next to going to the links in the show notes. If somebody wants to help, what would you tell them? What can, what can they do right now? Is there anything first, that they can do? Yeah, yeah. So, so three things. First, okay. if you don't know what to do, go and donate and feel better and take your time to think more. Second, if you don't know what to do, probably contact me on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and I will try to find the things, how we can cooperate. And third, imagine it's not Ukraine. Imagine it's, it's a design task. The inputs, you are far from conflict. There is a conflict. There are people struggling with this. You want to participate. And everything here is a design task. Imagine it will occur again. How will you act again? So let's take from the top of the list. Fake news on governmental le uh, level made by Russia. How you can oppose that? How will this lie upon lie upon lie and like they having their own scenarios of, of these lies going through social media? How you can actually oppose it? Because this why actually Russia turned off and how Twitter became alive again. So no Russia trolls and so on. So how you can do this maybe how you can make next step for volunteering movement between ukraine and other countries because now it's kind of volunteering volunteering like as we call on a knee done on the fingers but when you can establish a ground for better volunteering faster volunteering less risky volunteering yeah what's more as application with our companies ajax security and st falcon developers made this application for sirens and they have their own backlog, they move on, they make application distinguish sirens like a, 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 a air defense and urban warfare, let's say. And you understand way in your context around you, what are you experiencing and where to go. Yeah. So developing those things and thinking like isolate, there is a conflict. I, you have all the data. Your users are all the like all, on all social media. You don't have problem running uh, design task, making anything you want about that. You have all the things at hand. Any Ukrainian who has free time will be your user for your interview. You can bring customer journey, you can run through it by any means mm. and then build on that. Because without first build, you can't actually go further. You need to build on something and learn from the interaction with it. So I uh, thanks for sharing this. And I like how you phrase that everything is a design challenge or everything is a design task. Um, maybe... Uh, and maybe there's a list already, but I like if somebody needs uh, a starting point, you already gave three, but I'm sure that there are many other design challenges that might be meaningful to address right now. And if they don't know, like reach out to you on LinkedIn, that's probably uh, the best thing to do. Um, oh, yeah. Can, can I, in the end of our talk, probably do we have any points? Because I want to make shout out to Ukrainian designers who lost their jobs, guys. So we saw our team opens up all the practices and now you are getting there free, all of you. Come there, showcase your skills, working with volunteering project for Ukraine for now, and maybe you will be seen by some of our guests from companies and they will hire you. So yeah, let's let's talk about this uh, for a second. Sur Service.so, people who are listening to the uh, uh, podcast version don't see your t-shirt, but it's oh, Service.so. Uh, that's a website that you run or you co-run? 
So we just started before the war. Mm -hmm. Imagine that the bigger point is creating the Kiev Institute of Design, where we can actually create an environment for working closely between designers and actual companies. So they have real backlogs in solving real tasks. We've been doing this for three last years, and we had really good results. So we want to continue and scale this. But so is so is like a skateboard you need to jump and ride. So it's like engine to have this iteration being up, working with companies last six months, ten, testing all of that, taking from banking sphere to like governmental medicine sphere and trying to see if we can come up with this level of tasks and like making this four to five days sprint but like each weekend so you spread it across the months and everybody can cooperate beyond if they work or don't so and and you mentioned like it's now open to anybody any who lost the job, any designer who lost the job can attend this for free. And uh, we will prepare the volunteering projects that are now needed in Ukraine and we'll go up and see what is needed. And we kind of collide Perfect. all of these things we already talked through. Yeah. It's my commitment to that and our team. So we are doing what we speak in, in, in some words. Yeah? So everybody is invited join yeah, yeah, us yeah, and yeah. bring your volunteering projects as well so we are ready to uh, commit our time and knowledge cool so basically you're collecting meaningful design challenges that people can work on and that uh are, yeah. are real so then yeah. we th then for sure we are working for three years only with real tasks yeah so it's our like motto work with the real stuff and then we can map out this and map to this, our international community and see who, what, how. Do we need to make some grants to bring you here for two months? Yeah, a lot of things we need to think about. But, but like uh, this community of Ukrainian designers looking at how developers went up to 250 is making the same approach and we are repeating the failures of developers who are mostly outsourcing their work. So to bridge developers and designers for a local market and creating new software and not only software, bringing mm. software design especially yeah. into the place. Yeah, it's much needed thing and we don't need to... The less, the worst thing we want is in some times see the same drain of the best talent grow into a product way and going up. Yeah. And there are probably, and uh, it shouldn't happen because I can imagine that there are a lot of services also in Ukraine that need some love from the design community. Um, thanks for the shout out, uh, service.so. The link is also in the show notes. Um, Max, so uh, again, to wrap up, and this is really a wrap up. If uh, somebody remembers one thing from our conversation, what do you hope it is? Stand for the truth, stand and fight. Stand for the truth and fight. Awesome. Thank you for sharing your perspective on the state of service design, taking us through what's going on. Uh, really encourage you to keep on going. And uh, I hope that the design community can play a small part in helping to create a, a, a better, more, even more beautiful Ukraine. Thank you for having me. Good to be on the anniversary episode or half anniversary episode. Thank you for all the listeners. Keep in touch. Hope to see you in some future being uh, well and alive. <laughs> if you've made it all the way here, don't forget to check out some of the links that are in the show notes of this episode. And if you have questions for Max, reach out to him using the contact details that are also in the show notes. I really hope that you enjoyed this conversation, learned something new and found it inspiring. If you did, make sure to share it with just one other person today. Thanks a lot for watching to the Service Design Show and I'll catch you very soon in the next video.